At the Sports History Network, we're proud to introduce you to a new sponsor for our podcasts. It's Home Field Apparel, your premium collegiate apparel brand right out of Indianapolis. They've got incredibly comfortable t-shirts, plus they're officially licensed with vintage college designs. They have over 150 plus colleges available now and always adding more. Homefield digs through the archives and history of your school to find unique logos, mascots, and moments to make thoughtful designs for your school. When you shop today, New customers can get a 15% discount off their first purchase using the promo code SPORTSHISTORY at checkout. You can learn more at homefieldapparel.com. Now it's time to take a sports break, a look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great in sports history. And welcome to your sports break for the September 20th. We are going to talk about some of the greatest athletes and events that they performed on the September 20th in sports history to bring back some great memories. And before we do, I want to remind you that you can follow us on social media. Twitter is our main avenue that we usually take. It's at Pigskin Dispatch. It'll pop up as Pigskin Sports. That's us. We're going to tell you everything that's coming out on Pigskin Dispatch and on the Sports Jersey Dispatch podcast. And uh, don't forget to follow out us also at OrvilleMulligan.com. Uh, or I'm sorry, at Orville Mulligan, which will follow you to Orville Mulligan Sports Writer for all the great, exciting audio dramas coming up there, too, with which we are a part of. So our uniform numbers we'll talk about for the September 20th are 4, 14, 25, 32, 15, 9, number 7, 38, 15, 87, uniform 34, 41, 26, and lucky 13. September 20th, 1902, Chicago White Sox pitcher Jimmy Nixie Callahan ended up throwing a no-hitter against the Detroit Tigers in which the White Sox won the game 3-0. September 20th, 1907, Pittsburgh Pirates pitcher Nick Maddox threw a no-hitter against the Brooklyn Superbas in a 2-1 Pirates home win at Old Exhibition Park. Uh, September 20th, 1908, Chicago White Sox Frank Smith. He had his second no-hitter of his career as he beat the Philadelphia uh, Athletics 1-0. And September 20th, 1919, legendary baseball slugger Babe Ruth tied Ned Williamson's MLB mark of 27 home runs with a ninth inning blast in the Boston Red Sox 4-3 victory over those Chicago White Sox. September 20th, 1922, the St. Louis Cardinals future baseball Hall of Fame infielder Rogers Hornsby ends his sending streak of 33 straight games. Pretty longevity there for a great hitting streak. September 20th, 1924, Carl Mays became the first pitcher to win 20 games in a season for three different teams. That's some sure talent there. September 20th, 1924, Chicago Cubs' Grover Cleveland Alexander. Well, he defeated with his teammates the New York Giants to win his 300th game of his career. September 20th, 1931, New York Yankees number four Lou Gehrig's four RBIs break his old RBR mark of 175 that season en route to 184 with a new record. September 20th, 1933, the Pittsburgh Steelers, at the time called the Pittsburgh Pirates, played their very first NFL game. The new franchise ended up losing that game 23-2. September 20th, 1953, the Chicago Cubs' Ernie Banks, famous number 14, hit his first Major League home run, first of many. We just discussed him the other day with him hitting a quite a few in his uh, time there. Uh, September 20th, 1955, Willie Mays, the Giants number 25, homered off of the Pittsburgh Pirates pitching ace Vern Law, who wore number 32, in both ends of a doubleheader. With these, Mays became the seventh MLB player to reach 50 home runs in a season. Pretty good mark to have. September 20th, 1958, the Baltimore Orioles knuckleball pitcher Hoyt Wilhelm 
wearing number 15 on his jersey, tossed on no-hit performance versus the New York Yankees to provide a 1-0 Orioles win that day. In September 20th, 1961, Roger Maris, number 9, hit a home run number 59 of the season and barely misses reaching his 60th of the season in a game 154 of the season and the Yanks end up clinching pennant number 26 for that franchise. September 20th, 1968, Mickey Mantle, number 7 of the New York Yankees, hit his final career home run for a grand total of 536 bombs over the wall. September 20th, 1969, Pittsburgh Pirates pitcher number 38, Bob Moose, well, he threw a no-hitter as well against the New York Mets for a 4-0 Pirates win. Uh, September 20th, 1980, the bronze plaque dedicated to the memory of catcher Thurman Munson, number 15, was unveiled at Yankee Stadium. If you remember, Thurman Munson died in a plane crash so tragically in the season of 1979. On September 20th, 1987, San Francisco's wide receiver number 87, Dwight Clark's NFL streak of 105 consecutive games with a reception ended in a 49ers 27-26 victory in Cincinnati. It was better to get the win and not have the catch, I'm sure is what Dwight Clark was saying that day. September 20th, 1987, the Chicago Bears running back number 34, Walter Payton Sweetness, scored his NFL record career 107th rushing touchdown in the Bears' 20-3 triumph over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. September 20th, 1988, the Detroit first baseman, Darrell Evans, number 41, hit a home run in a Tigers 4-3 loss to the Cleveland Indians. Now that was Evans' 400th Major League Baseball career home run. Pretty good numbers there. September 20th, 1988, Boston Red Sox number 26, Wade Boggs, is the first player to get 200 hits for six consecutive seasons. Definitely could swing the bat. September 20th, 2013, Alex Rodriguez, number 13 of the New York Yankees. Well, A-Rod set a new Major League Baseball record with 24 Grand Slam home runs in his career. And finally, September 20th, 2021, Kansas City's Royals' Salvador Perez hits his 46th home run to break Hall of Fame Johnny Bench's Major League record for the most in a season by a catcher. And the Royals win 7-2 in Cleveland. And that is our sports break for today, September 20th. Glad you could join us. Hope you'll join us each and every day for some more great sports history here on JerseyDispatch.com, PigskinDispatch.com, and on SportsHistoryNetwork.com. Till tomorrow, everybody, have a great sports history day. Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout, and he's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. To get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Offices of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row One brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. Isn't it just? A poster sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website, where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction, in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. (laughs) Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. 
Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football, college basketball art, Michael Jordan items. And so Retro it was that Marla Delt discovered the splendiferous magic of Row One Sports Memorabilia Arts and Prints. You can too by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. That's R O W number one today for access to the full Row One catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs. Blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act today for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at checkout. And keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer. Coming soon. Oh, yes,